Thank you. It's difficult to, of course, put a single word or a th single theme uh, across a very rich agenda. Uh, but the one I would venture is the accelerated pace of change. Um, if you look back in history from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, this was a fairly stable industry, retail and CPG. It was about building billion-dollar brands globally. It was about selling that through supermarkets and hypermarkets. It was about uh, premiumization in the West and category development in the East. And it was making money by becoming bigger locally and be becoming bigger globally. It was largely unchallenged. What we see at Bain is in the last five years, everything has been challenged. First by technology. I mean, the pace of technological progress is very documented, uh, is accelerating and changing the way people sh shop. The level of patience, anybody, you, me, show, uh, when we shop, has diminished. I think patience will be soon a word we don't use anymore. The second one is the consumer needs. The consumer needs uh, are changing. It was all about what does the product do for me? Now it's about what does it do for the world? How does it make me feel? Five years ago, there was no discussion about brand purpose. Today, it's all about brand purpose. And the last one, it's probably the one I got the most inspired from uh, this week, is sustainability. Uh, sustainability and the agenda of sustainability is paramount now for, for, uh, for the industry. And so um, I said accelerate in pace of change. This is where I see a lot of value in the forum, uh, is that you bring people together to solve more complex problems that individual companies in their individual corners cannot solve by themselves. Uh, there, are, there are three factors we see challenging the, the uh, FMCG model. And we call them tectonic shift because we believe they will have massive impact. The first one is very documented, is the changes in retail. Uh, retail, as I said, was a very stable model in the 80s and 90s. And now the retail industry is in, in massive evolution. On the one hand, we assume at Bain that a third, about a third of the retailers will struggle financially and will end up being bought or consolidated in a way or another. At the other end of the spectrum, you have the ecosystems, Alibaba and Amazon, not only thriving, but redefining what retail is all about. And in the middle, you have very successful new concept in value uh, retail or innovative retail. Uh, for CPG, this shift means that their client based in a few years will have nothing to do with the client based a few years ago. And we estimate that the difference between the companies who will do that well and the companies that will do that in a very confrontational way is 20 to 50% of their EBIT. There is huge value at stake for CPG to face this uh, retail tectonic shift. The second one is around consumers. I, I said that consumers' expectations are changing, but it, it's worth uh, describing what we see. The first one is what we call post-globalization. It used to be that consumers, for a while, liked global products and billion dollar brands. There are a number of forces uh, uh, against that nowadays. When we study the Chinese shopper and the Indian shoppers, who by the way, in the next 10 years will represent the majority of the growth in retail and in CPG, they want more and more local product, more and more authentic product, products that they want manufactured in their markets. That's a shift. Um, the second one is that between the very, very rich and the poor, the it's a very documented issue, the gap is increasing. And their needs at the top, at the middle, and at the bottom are becoming increasingly different. And third, and if you look individually, consumer by consumer, we see an, an evolution in what they want in brands. Uh, usually in the past, it was, what does the product do for me? Now it's, how does it make me feel? It's, what does it do for my life? And what does it do for society? And the branding model of CPGs is upside down right now because of these shifting consumers. And the last one is sustainability. I mean, guys, uh, it took 100 years for the, the world to realize that air might be polluted, 15 to get, uh, to get a solution against ozone layer destruction, five to sort out the bulbs in electricity. And I see the measures in plastics now happening in month or uh, one year or two. There is an accelerated uh, shift in, in sustainability. The mistake I would not do if I was a CPG executive is to think that these three shifts, retail, consumer, and sustainability, will be sequential. They are all happening right now and are calling for a fundamental uh, revisitation of the uh, CPG model. Yeah, we, we see three things. Uh, the first one is quite obvious. is In a world that is changing, you need to focus on what you do best and better than anybody else in the world. So after waves of scale consolidation, we see 
we predict a lot of portfolio shifts and a lot more of divestiture and reacquisitions. I believe that in a world of uncertainty, you need to focus on what you do best, i.e., where you have a point of view of what the consumer of the future will need, where you have proprietary data assets or insights that you can leverage, and where you at least have a chance of winning in an extraordinary uncertain environment. So the first one will be portfolio. The second one, and it's what at Bain we call the firm of the future, is when everything becoming, becomes more complex and more uncertain. Think about it. Uh, the retail, the sales channel are becoming either more fragmented or more consolidated or more ecosystem. The marketing model is changing. In the past, it was all about TV. Now it's about many, many me media channels. And the, the, the manufacturing model is also completely changing because in the past it was one big factory. Now it's smaller skews, some individual products that you and I will, will, uh, will buy, individualized pet food, individualized beauty products. When the model explodes in complexity like that, you can't do everything yourself. That's why we predict that the FMCG model will move from an entirely owned system to an ecosystem where CPG companies will have to learn to partner with other companies and own less assets, uh, uh, but entertain or control parts uh, of an ecosystem. And the third one, which is probably the one I worry the most about, is in a world where everything is changing, your metabolism of change management needs to change. And it's not that easy. As I said, the model for most of the 80s, 90s, and 2000s was very stable. Uh, CPG companies are looking at tens of thousands of employees that all of a sudden will need to change every month and not in cycles of five years. And that's something that the industry doesn't have as a muscle. So the advice we give companies when, when they ask us is to look outside. Because what's happening in CPG, which looks like massive change, has happened in technology, telecom, and to some extent in financial services that have become IT platforms. And so we, we are calling at Bain for um, import of talent in the CPG companies, as we have been exporting for 30 years very good marketers and very good salespeople. Isn't it time to import talent from tech of people who have seen this type of change and who have moved the metabolism of change? What does that mean concretely? It means moving innovation cycle from two years to four or five months. And it means changing the way you beat the drum of the company, as I said, from two to five years to uh, six to 12 months. Yeah, the business case for being a sustainable co company is, is massive, but, but it's, it's, it's quite different depending on the time or horizon we have. The first one we see is that when, when you talk about waste or water, and you talk about reducing usage, the business case is very strong because you can do good reducing usage while doing well because you lower your cost and you make more profit. That, these are the easy business case that we see applicable for most companies. The second business case are less obvious because they include the use of new technologies, new uh, material technologies that a lot of the packaging companies that were present this week at the Consumer Goods Forum advertise. The problem here is the time between the investments and, and the call it savings or the improvements in the, upper, in the business model. Uh, most of CPG companies are quoted. They have to report quarterly earnings. And I worry sometimes that what's required to be sustainable has longer time frame than what the investor community expects from CPG companies. That would be number two. Number three is I was very inspired that there are some problems that have no good business case if you, if you look at an individual company. One-way packaging, uh, non-reusable packaging in thin foil has no value, and it's impossible for a company on their own to recycle them. But if you step two steps back and you look at the total system cost of the producer of the packaging, the user of the packaging, the recycling companies, and the government, you get a fantastic business model that in the long term you can make work even with the capitalistic rules of the game. And what this forum helps is bringing these people together and getting a crack at this total cost optimization. Now, if you take another step back, you have to, uh, to think about what is this business case of sustainability against? Because I still see people looking at this business case against nothing, i.e. stable profit and growth. From what I've seen, from what I hear from the outside, the alternative of not building a sustainable business case is not nothing. It's governments imposing top-down measures that companies will be surprised by. I'm a proponent of 
retailers and CPG setting their own standards, very strict standards, but predictable standards, as opposed to be surprised by even looser standards imposed all of a sudden by governments on NGO because they are worried we are not moving fast enough. And I completely get that, by the way. In the, in the longer term, I think if you don't build a sustainable business case, you will have no business. And so I think that I, I like the question of the sustainability business case, but I insist that it's not against, uh, against doing nothing, it's against probably disappearing as a company.